Hey, Larkin Rose here. I thought I'd quick make a video. I was gonna write out a big explanation, but that would have taken forever. So I'm just gonna start putting out some videos that explain the idea behind uh, the project called Unlocking the Cage. Actually, I may not use that title because it's been used for other things, um, but whatever, whatever it's gonna be called. Uh, I thought I'd explain the, the purpose and the general idea and how it works and all that. Um, because it's sort of a weird thing that I've never seen before um, and I think it will be the most effective thing I can imagine for getting people out of the indoctrination of statism. Uh, first of all, the problem. The problem is that when you, uh, when you talk to somebody who believes in government, I don't care if they're Democrat, Republican, Constitutionalist, whatever the heck they are, uh, and this was true when I was a statist for years and years too. Uh, and this is true of almost any thing you can have a disagreement about. When you approach somebody and say, you believe one thing, I believe a different thing, I think you should throw away what you believe and adopt what I believe, people automatically get on the defensive. Even if you're polite and being rational and they feel like it's an attack because they feel like what they believe is part of who they are. And if you're coming along saying, uh, well, you believe is stupid, you should throw it away and believe what I believe. You're basically saying part of you is stupid. You're either duped or you're an idiot or you're evil or something. So please stop being stupid or evil and agree with me instead. So people immediately and automatically go into defensive mode and want to defend their position. It's not about them being open at all. You know, even if they're somebody who's rational and dares to think about things, there's sort of already the inertia of where they already are and thinking they already have a pretty good idea of, of what's true and what's false and what's right and what's wrong. So there's this project I'm doing, which is gonna be a massively involved project. It's probably gonna take a year at least to do. The challenge is not actually the logic or the philosophy because that's been around for ages and it's actually pretty dang easy. If people want to think about the concepts and want to and dare to question what they always assumed and want to think about it, the concepts of self-ownership and the non-aggression principle and a voluntary society, they're really simple. They're ridiculously obvious. The challenge is not that the logic and the, and the principles are so complex that people can't possibly understand them. They're ridiculously easy. The challenge is human psychology and getting past the mental inertia in people's minds that keep them from thinking about new ideas. And I've, for the last 18 years now, I've been an anarchist talking to hundreds and hundreds of people in lots of different situations and settings, a lot of them one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's online or in person. and. You know, some obviously confrontational, and the way this project is, is very much not the way I usually approach things, but it makes use of what I've learned, having talked to hundreds and hundreds of people, and watching the ways in which their brains do these weird irrational reactions to, to questions and ideas, which are actually very simple. So. You know, you, you see all the philosophers who for hundreds of years have been explaining these things. Most of the world has still never heard of these things and doesn't understand them. It's not because the philosophy and the logic isn't there. It's been there forever. It's because psychology is getting in the way, getting in the way and most philosophers don't bother to figure out how to get around the hurdles that are the obstacles inside the human mind that try to keep people thinking whatever they already believe, even if it's irrational and stupid and destructive and insane and a few other things. So the purpose of this, this project is to get around that. Now, I think I've gotten down to the point where if I'm with somebody who dares to talk and has an open, friendly discussion and we're in a one-on-one -on -one setting, there's nobody else watching, so there's no peer pressure and there's no stress on them and they don't feel like it's a conflict, um, I have a pretty high rate of success at getting people to question what they've always assumed about authority and government and this and that and the other thing. It won't always be in one sitting, often they'll, they'll have to think about things and then later we'll, we'll pick it up where we left off or, or whatever. Uh, the thing is, by its very nature, those discussions cannot be made public. 
because one of the <laughs> the biggest reason to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion is the, so the person doesn't feel on the spot and doesn't feel the pressure and stress like everybody's watching him and, and if he doesn't win the debate then he'll look like an idiot. Uh, so one-on-one -on -one, I've gotten to where I can do it pretty well. Well this project will be considerably more effective than me having a one-on-one -on -one discussion with people. Because this project, I'll try to describe it, it's really weird, I don't know anything else that, that to really even compare it to. From the, from the user's perspective, it will feel like a discussion. They go to this video, they see video, there's a, there's a person talking to them and asking them questions, and based on their answers, it determines where the discussion goes next. So they, they, the user guides the direction of the discussion. And one of the key elements is that there is no other personality, there is no other set of beliefs, and there are no assertions from any other picture, any other position in the equation, which seems weird and impossible, because how do you have a discussion with only one person's opinion involved? But it really is that, because this presentation, all it does is use certain lines of questioning which change based on how the person answers things. So it's an adaptive, ridiculously complicated flowchart, basically. You know, it asks them question A, and if they say yes, then it goes in this direction. If it says no, then it goes in this direction. So it accounts for basically every direction that the conversation could go. Every step of the way, there isn't a right or wrong answer. The, 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 the face and voice they're talking to never brings up an opinion, is never judgmental, never says, that was a stupid answer, you got it wrong. It says, okay, that's your answer. And, the, and from the beginning, it emphasizes the fact that the user, through this whole process, is the final judge and jury of what is true and what is false, what is right and what is wrong. He get, What's consistent, what's inconsistent, he gets to decide. There will be no outside judgment on him of whether he got anything right. Now, this doesn't work in the vast majority of, of subjects and, and topics of discussion and fields of thought. Like if you're trying to teach biology or quantum physics or stuff, you can't say, well, every opinion is equally valid. That, that's bogus, it doesn't work, you don't learn anything. The only reason this approach works in this particular setting is because every single person who believes in government still has contradictions inside his own head. It's not just a matter of, you advocate A, I advocate B, they don't match, let's scream at each other until one of us gives up. It's not that at all. It's that every single person, when he simply removes the contradictions inside his own head, he ends up as an anarchist, always. Because you cannot be a statist without having contradictions inside your own head. And it took me years and years and years to learn this the hard way about myself when I was a statist. And I would argue with other people of, of you know, whatever position they were in. And later I'd think about things and, and think, well, it sort of felt like I was contradicting myself when I said this and this and that. And, that. And then I would whittle away the contradictions and I would talk to my wife Tessa and we'd have discussions and we'd both sort of whittle away each other's contradictions until we completely fell off the status spectrum. Uh, I've said this before, I'll say it again. A lot of anarchists get to becoming, get to be anarchists by deciding that a society without government is better than a society with government. That's not how I got there. I got there by proving to myself logically, which is actually really easy, that government cannot be legitimate. It cannot actually have authority. And without authority, it's not government anymore. It's just a gang of thugs bossing people around. Government, the term, implies authority, the group that has the right to rule over and govern some area. So anyway, I got there by realizing there isn't another choice. Anarchy is what is. Government is an illusion. And the people who believe in government all have to believe a set of contradictory, conflicting ideas just to hold statism inside their heads. And if you remove the contradictions, the statism just falls out. 
So this unlocking the cage or whatever it's going to be called, all it has to do is guide people through their own thought processes and their own opinions and their own beliefs and their own answers about, you know, their answers to various questions to guide them to the contradictions inside their own head. And even then they get to decide what to do about it. They even get to decide whether to declare that a contradiction or not. Or say, oh, yeah, I said A and I said B and they're mutually exclusive, but I'm sticking to it. So this, the, the weird magic thing about this, this project is that it doesn't assert or argue anything ever. All it has to do is ask questions. And the thing is, even one-on-one, -on -one, when I do this one-on-one -on -one with people, if they get stuck, this is just human nature, and I do it just as much as anybody else. If they get stuck and they feel like they're about to contradict themselves, they get defensive, they get irrational, they get angry, they start to say stupid things, they start to change the subject. And this is in a nice conversation. If it's somebody they're getting along with and it's private and generally polite, in this presentation, because there is no other human being, they don't feel rushed, they don't feel pressure, they don't feel tricked, they don't feel scared about answering. Uh, in fact, one of the, the, the cool things about um, this, this presentation, whatever you want to call it, is people can go back and change their answers. Now, if you do that with another person, they said, aha, you just contradicted yourself. Presentation doesn't do that. It says, okay, if you want to go back and change that answer and go from there, you can do that. Like, you're the only judge here. Like, this isn't, the program isn't judging you and telling you whether you're an idiot or not. So if you say yes, and then a while later you say, I guess, no, I guess the answer to that was actually no, you go back and you change it to no, and you keep going and see what happens from there. So there's all the way no pressure. Now, there is a human face and a voice guiding them through this, but it never says I, and it never has an opinion, and it never renders an judge any judgment, and it never makes any assertion. Basically, it's a tour guide through your own head <laughs> and your own belief system that's just completely passive and polite the whole time and not judgmental at all. So there's all the way no stress and there's no rush. Oh, another big thing is if you're in a discussion with somebody and you ask them a question, well, what do you think about this? And they sit there and think and they're not really sure and they pause for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, they feel really stupid. And they want to say something. People aren't comfortable with that silence. If you just ask me a question and I'm just sitting here going, eh, eh, eh. well, if it isn't a human being and if it will wait literally forever for an answer without tapping its fingers on the table or saying, come on, come on, come on, then there is none of that stress. And you can sit there and think. And this, this uh, unlocking the cage, whatever it's going to be called, is designed so that the person, for every question, they can either sit there and think about it for 10 minutes or they can get out of the presentation and think about it for a day or a week or a month and then come back whenever they want and they get a, a simple number and they put in the number and it knows where they left off and all the answers they gave up to that, everything that happened up to that point. So there's none of that immediate pressure of, because you know one of the most important things is when you can get somebody to the point where they say, I'm gonna have to think about that, shut up. Just shut up and let them think about it. Because getting somebody to think about stuff is the entire challenge. And if you're talking over them instead of letting them think, that's stupid. So this presentation, when they want to think, they can think as long as they want. And they can come back and, and every question actually, it gives a chance to, to like, if you want clarification or elaboration or like, well, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Every question can expand on, on what it means so they can think about it and give it, it can give examples. They can think, well, yeah, I think, I think I do agree with that in this case and whatever it is. So there's all the way no pressure because it's there isn't another human being and there's no time limit and there's no judgment and there's no right and there's no wrong. I mean, in reality, obviously, there is a right and a wrong. There is a true and a false. But in this presentation, there doesn't have to be any of that because none of it is based on accepting any particular facts. It's just based on the fact that Everyone who believes in authority has contradictions inside their own head. And if you can guide people to them, a whole lot of people will see the contradiction and say, I kind of have to think of what to do about that. Because if I believe A and I believe B and they don't match, they can't possibly coexist, one of them must be wrong. And I gotta figure out what it is. 
See, the beauty of this, and it starts out with this in the introduction, is it assumes that the user is a good person with good intentions and wants good things. Because if you assume, well, maybe you're evil, well, what's the point of talking to them? So it says this isn't to decide if you're good. It's going to start with the assumption that you're good, and you get to decide every step along the way all questions of, of true and false and all questions of right and wrong. It's all up to you. And really the point is to make you, the user, consistent with your own values. It isn't to make you loyal to somebody else's moral code. It's to keep you loyal with your own. And it, it talks in terms of, you know, there may have been ideas and concepts you were taught or that you picked up from society that are actually interfering with what you think you should be and with, with what you think society should be and with what you think is right and wrong and your values and your preferences and your priorities. So the whole thing is tailored to just help the person be at one with themselves really. I mean, it doesn't use that terminology, but that's basically what it does because I assert, and a lot of people have learned this, a whole lot of people who haven't gone through this will say, what are you talking about? But a lot of people have learned this. I assert that when you are at one with your own mental state and you are actually consistent inside your own head, you are an anarchist. You can't not be. You cannot be a statist anymore if you're consistent inside your own head. So it doesn't have to say, you're evil. You're condoning evil crap, even though a lot of people do. And I do that all the time. Uh, incidentally, this is... This is not my normal approach with people. I mean, I can do this to a certain extent in certain settings, but in debates, I'll just bludgeon people over the head with their contradictions, and it'll be a, a debate and an argument. This is not a debate. This is not an argument. This whole... And, and one of the beauties of this is, from the user's point of view, it's just one discussion, but it's a different discussion for every user because the direction is determined by every single answer the user gives. If he answers yes, all right, now we're going in that direction. And I can only do this because I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of real discussions with real statists over the past 18 years that have been an anarchist, and I know the way their brain's going. I know the things that the human mind will do to, to evade thinking about things and how it'll misunderstand something, it twists something, and turn something into an emotional argument. And so every step of the way, because it's all it's pre-recorded, but it does not come across as just a video. It's not sit there, shut up, and I'm going to throw ideas at you. It's not that at all. In fact, there are no ideas except for what the user brings to it, which is sounds just bizarre. And until people go through it, it's going to sound like, well, how do you how do you teach anybody anything if you don't put any ideas in front of them? And it, in this case, it really can be done, and it really is the best way to do it. But because it's all pre-recorded. It, it comes across as one discussion for the user, but it's all recorded. So, you know, the user, I, I haven't figured out exactly how long the whole process will take. Let's just say it will take an hour. This is a wild guess. I have no idea yet. Um, I haven't tried it. If it takes one hour of discussion for somebody to go through it, there was probably 12 or 20 hours of actual video of all the directions it could have gone in all the different clips, from all the different answers of all the different questions. Okay, if you answer yes, we move to this, then it asks that. So every question can be perfectly presented and perfectly worded. It's like having a discussion with somebody who says everything exactly the way he should to be perfectly clear the first time he says it without having to think about it. And nobody in the world can actually do that in real time. But this has the advantage that it's all pre-programmed, but it comes across as an interactive discussion. Again, an interactive discussion that's different for different people because they decide where it goes. There is a, a massive number of ways in which the direction, in, of directions in which the discussion can go, but it's not infinite. And it can be broken down to a flow chart, an if-then chart. If they say yes, then you go that way. If they say no to the next one, then you go that way. If they said yes to the question, three questions back, and then they say no to this one, then you go in this direction. And it's ridiculously complicated, but it is not infinitely complicated. And the reason I think it's, my guess is that it will take a year 
of actually working on it, not just, oh, occasionally I'll do a little bit in my spare time. The reason I think it'll actually take a year to do this is because it is a massively complex flowchart to cover basically every direction the, the conversation could take. But it does that without ever being, without ever having to assert anything. And uh, a lot of people who haven't been through this will think that can't possibly work. And I would, I would totally sympathize with that if I didn't. Uh, and if you had asked me a year ago, would it be possible to make a reproducible interactive version of this? I'd say no way. No, it's, there's too many directions it can go. There's too many variables. It's just way too unpredictable. And, and so back then I would have said, you know, the best I can do, the most effective way I know to get someone to question their statism and authoritarianist indoctrination is if I could have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with them, you know, in a friendly, calm setting and nobody else is watching and there's no peer pressure. Um, but I can only do that with one person at a time while there are, you know, thousands of new statists being born every day. Well, they're not born as statists, but they're quickly programmed into being statists. So that was the best I could come up with. This is better than that, but that isn't the cool thing about this. The cool thing is this is better than that, and a billion people can do it at the same time, and it will be different for all of them because they guide the discussion. To actually have that power of the interactive thing where their own, uh, I refer to it as intellectual Aikido, the only force that is in there is the force they bring into it. There's no challenges, there's no verbally punching them in the face because they got the wrong answer. It's just their answers that guide the whole thing and their responses and their judgments. It just guides them through. So in a way, they are discovering the truth for themselves, which is the most powerful thing. Because if I have some piece of truth and you don't, or the other way around, and one of us says, sit there and shut up, I'm gonna throw truth at you, the person isn't likely to be open and isn't likely to pay attention, they're likely to be defensive. If they happen to listen to it and happen to concentrate, they might get it, they might not, but if they find it themselves, it's in their brain forever and it's part of them. It's not just, oh, I heard some guy say something like this at some point. This is actually guiding people to finding this truth for themselves without having to assert or argue anything. So that's my not very short, quick description of it. Um, and there's a, a funding page for this. The, the funding center on Freedoms Phoenix is for things just like this. And I, I've been sort of daydreaming about this project for a little bit more than a year. I didn't nearly think it would happen because uh, one of the important things is it can't cost people anything. Like if you say, hey, if you wanna have me mess up your view of reality, just give me 20 bucks. People don't want to pay to, uh, to do something they assume is going to be somebody throwing a conflicting view at them. But, you know, pay somebody to disagree with you. <laughs> People don't like to do that. And it would immediately be a giant limiting factor on how effective it could be. So it has to be free. I'm thinking, well, here's this massively complex project, which basically has no profit <laughs> potential involved. So what's the, you know, how is this ever gonna happen? You know, I can only just barely pay my bills as it is now. I can't devote a year to something just to be nice <laughs> while well, my family starves to death. But the Freedoms Phoenix Funding Center came into being and I thought, I thought well, I'll throw it out there and see if people think this is important because I, this is sort of a humongous dream project that a year ago I thought it would be so cool if there was something like this, but there's never going to be because first of all, I thought it's not possible. And then I thought it's not possible to fund it and I can't do it for a year. Uh, and all later on, I can describe more what it'll actually look like, the appearance of it, um, because it will be, it isn't just here's some text on the screen, answer a question. That's just way too boring and way too stupid and not interesting. It'll be visual, it'll have sound, it'll be a person, it'll be a discussion, it'll be cool, it'll have, uh, like, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. I'll explain more of that later. Um, but it will be this giant interactive thing that is better than me or anyone I know sitting down one-on-one -on -one to talk to a status. It'll be more effective than that, 
and a billion people can be doing it at the same time. So that's sort of my crash course in what this thing is going to be about as I, uh, I'll like make a list of other things I want to, to bring up and mention about it um, and make videos in the future. But if you do want to fund it, if you think it sounds like a cool thing, um, I'm already starting, I'm already working on the flow chart and the, the graphics of what it's going to look like. Uh, as it happens, I already um, have the software and the know-how to do the whole thing. What I don't have is the time to do it for free because it will be a massive amount of effort. Um, but I already have all the software and I already know how to do it. Um, a lot of it will be in a computer generated world but with an actual person being the, the face and voice who talks to people, uh, which by the way won't be me, um, <laughs> which is a big advantage too. So if you think that sounds cool, um, if you want to know more, I'll be making more videos to explain it. If you want to help fund this thing, because it's already started, I am going to make it, whether I starve to death in the process or not. It would be fun if I didn't starve to death in the process. Um, but it is underway, and I'll throw out more and more about it. Um, it will be a huge undertaking, but when it's finished, I would use it before I'd even use myself. Before I'd sit down and talk to somebody, I'd say, instead of talking to me about it, I mean, you can talk to me about it if you feel like it, but what's better is go here and do it this way. Go to this, and it'll be a website and an application for every kind of phone and computer and tablet and whatever the heck else there is. Um, everything under the sun, people can do it by whatever means they want. I think it, it may even work just as a DVD, too, for those old-fashioned people like me who don't have a smartphone and all that. But So that's the general idea. Um, if you like it, learn more later. If you already like it enough to help fund it and keep it going, then do that and I will tell you more about it later.